Pagyamanin Likas Musika is represented by George Gan Ganhe and Reunion E.V. Klopenberg For its dedication in building bridges through philanthropy and cultural exchange, as well as its generosity in extending support both in Germany and in Reunion is represented by Antoinette de la Manalo and Carmelino Bachoco. Marina R. Sulce, United States of America. For her commendable philanthropic works and selflessness, particularly by establishing the Julia Sulce Scholarship Program for the education of less fortunate children in Taft, Eastern Samar. The second award category is the Kaanid ng Bayan Award. It is specifically for foreign individuals or organizations significant contribution to Philippine reconstruction, progress, and development have significantly benefited a sector or community in the Philippines advance the cause of overseas Filipino communities for foreign allies who have showed exceptional care for to Filipinos, the President confers the Kaanib ng Bayan Alan E. Johannesen, Norway for his notable efforts to save and provide shelter for forsaken street children in Leyte by the Foundation, The Streetlight Philippines. Sheikh Fadel, Pakistan. For his philanthropic contributions and dedicated service, to help the Filipinos in Lahore, Pakistan, such as opening Adil Hospital to provide Filipinos quality medical care services. <laughs> Zhu Chi Foundation, Taiwan. For exemplary philanthropic works and that uplifted the physical, emotional, and spiritual state of marginalized Filipinos in the Philippines. Zuchi Foundation is represented by Henry Anthony Ho and Dean Horn. Sabine Korth for her altruistic efforts in raising funds for the establishment of health Bugko Mondragon, Northern Samar, and her outstanding philanthropic work for the welfare and well-being of the people in Northern Samar. Sabine Katarina Weiss, Germany, for her proactive involvement in safeguarding the rights and protection of Filipino women migrants in Germany, as well as establishing to facilitate services for the people of Palapar Norte, Malasiki, Pangasinan. Ambassador we received the award in behalf of Miss Course and Miss Vice. The third award category is True development exists only when the marginalized and sectors in our society are able to feel and see the it brings to their lives. For Filipino organizations and individuals who have provided unparalleled support and assistance in advancing the cause of Filipino communities overseas, the President conferred award. Marilu S. Chin. For her dedication and commendable efforts in establishing Stairway to Hope Learning Center, which has provided alternative learning education to the children in Saba.
Fidel M. Etar. For his exemplary professional career and his dedication and leadership in addressing the welfare and psychosocial needs of overseas Filipinos in his individual capacity and as founder of social civic organizations in Qatar. Kapit Bahayan Ko For its steadfast commitment in providing affordable yet comfortable housing accommodations to low-medium income Filipinos cultural families, and for strongly promoting Filipino culture and values. Kapit Bahayan Cooperative by Pablo Lee, Ruben Amores, and Innocencia Amores. Rodrigo B. Maristela, Germany. For his continuous effort to diaspora philanthropy initiatives for the benefit of fellow Filipinos in the Philippines and extensive contributions in keeping the Filipino spirit alive in Germany by promoting and preserving the rich Philippine culture and traditions overseas. Philippine Nurses Association of Metropolitan DC, United States of America. For its exemplary services in helping Filipino nurses be integrated in Metropolitan DC and its philanthropic spirit in helping the underprivileged in the US and the Philippines. PNA of Metropolitan DC is represented by Lorna Imperial Seidel, Alice Namata Andam, and Vicente de la Peña. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Central Region, Saudi Arabia, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. For its general excellence, coupled with its philanthropic spirit and its careful culture and aspiring Filipino mechanical engineers to be globally competitive. PSME is represented by Leandro Conti, Jonathan Danieles, and Jay Rosses. The fourth and last award category is the Bino Award. The unique traits and virtues are what make them highly sought after, whether in international organizations, business institutions, government, or as individual professionals. For Filipinos overseas who have demonstrated excellence or distinction in their work or profession, the President of the Pilipino Award. Eduardo K. Araral Jr., Singapore. Contributions to the advanced knowledge in the field of economic governance and public policy and the prestige he has brought to be he has brought to both the Philippines. Eduardo Araral Sr. will receive the award in behalf of Mr. Araral Jr. Manuel G. Asuncion, Australia. For his exemplary devotion and passion in promoting Filipino culture and heritage through language, art, and multicultural Australia. Danilo P. Buan, United States of America. His expertise in mechanical engineering, having resulted in a rare achievement of obtaining 28 USA patents, in sharing his expertise as an educator and by providing scholarships to deserving students in Western Visayas. 
Guillermo B. Capati, Australia. For his exemplary leadership and waste and wastewater management, and his outstanding public service and contribution to the city of Gold Coast and the Philippine motherland. Emmanuel B. Liban, United States of America. Expertise and invaluable field of transportation, environment, and sustainability, which has the county of Los Angeles and the Filipino-American community through his introduction of technology advancements, creative financing, and leveraging. <clears throat> Paulino M. Lim, Jr., United States of America. For his significant contributions to Philippine literature through his politically and scholarly works about Fil Philippine history, Benedicto Mirabueno will receive the award in behalf of Mr. Lim Jr. <clears throat> Hernan M. Reyes, United States of America. For his significant contributions as an academician, his outstanding professional achievement as a surgeon in the United States, his leadership in establishing the Society of Surgeons in America, and invaluable service that in the Philippines and in the United States of America. Francisca Tolete Velsek, a former presidential awardee, will receive the award in behalf of Dr. Reyes. Serio, United Arab Emirates, for his outstanding accomplishments as an at the Canadian University of Dubai and for his in the field of human resource management and organization that led him to participate in a number of conferences, including Harvard University. May I request the awardees to please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the honor to present the 2016 Presidential Awardees. Congratulations to this year's awardees. We would now like to request all awardees to please be seated. May I now call on Mr. Alan E. Johannesson to deliver a message in behalf of the, of the awardees. Mr. President, your honors, co-awardees, family, friends, good afternoon. Para sa mga Bisaya, mayong hapon. Uh, <laughs> uh, ang gihapon, mag-greet uh, yung mga kaibigan mo, tikang reho no atak na ha, atong nga tanan. Gusto ko talaga mag-Bisaya, pero dira na makaintindi mga ambassadors. So, ma-English na lang tayo. Uh, first of all, let me say thank you so much. It's we're all, I think I speak on, we're deeply honored uh, to receive this award. Um, I am, so if you bear with me, I would love to share some of the things and experiences I've had the past 13, 14 years. Stunningly beautiful country. 
12 years or so, um, I was waiting for a bus, and I see a funeral procession. There was something off with this funeral procession, where I see that the coffin is put on two bamboo stilts. I see the coffin is makeshift, made of things made of rubble, or things one might I turn to the procession behind the coffin, and I see that the oldest one might have been 12, 13 years old. I look back at the coffin, and I see it's not even a meter long. And this image has stuck with me all of these years. But there is something added tra tragedy. Um, there is something more to what I witnessed that scorching hot moon, I think it is. What, when need meets love, Something happens, something, something magical. Personal reaction that transcends culture, language, and even politics. What was it that I, what was it that I witnessed? A group of children having lost one of their friends taking the time and effort to find materials, to make a coffin, gently lie their deceased friend in the coffin, sealing it, deciding to gather up, parade their lost friend in the busy street in the middle of the day. Why? Their friend allowed Now it struck with me, how can children, I know me for my sake, I could never have done such an act, but how can children, who many of them, has been deprived of the love and care that they so, so much crave for, much compassion and respect for life even after death. When one finds oneself in a situation where you give without the intent in return, but you end up feeling love itself, no matter the circumstance. But setting out on a mission of wanting to give your whole heart, your everything, into something that's worth its sacrifice. That has ripple effects. The love, dedication, and the commitment I witnessed that afternoon has changed my life forever. Once asked to, to have the honors of doing this speech, I tried to read up on, on you guys. And what I saw took my breath away. And I definitely feel humble standing here in front what I saw, the specter of love, compassion, dedication, was only equal, equaled by the lack of self And we find it in all fields, be it preserving nature, engineering, protection, or aiding victims of traffic. We see the same notion. We see a notion that I'm an engineer, a nurse, a carpenter. I will take what little I have and make the most out of it to change the world. And after listening yesterday, and thank you very much for a wonderful evening yesterday, afternoon rather. 
After listening to the selfless accomplishments of the heroes that you are, I am more sure now than ever, right here in Misal Hall. The Filipino culture is truly, genuinely, the most amazing culture there is. And the world has a lot to learn from it. And second, where the spirit prevails, there is hope. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johannesson. May we now call on Executive Secretary Yaldea to introduce our distinguished speaker. Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor to present to you the President of the Republic of the Philippines, Mayor Rodrigo Rora Duterte. Thank you. Thank you. This is all introductions. Uh, Executive Secretary Salvador Mijaldi, Secretary Silvestro Silvestre Belio, Jesus Yabes, Hela Ugalias, Excellencies of Diplomat. The 2016 Presidential Award, leaders and organizations from society, fellow workers in the countrymen. There's no speech to read, but uh, let me just uh, my one of my passages actually together Kadur the secretary just above the pigeon hole where uh, cat saying anonymous dot I my author is Let me not differ or I shall how all of you. You have it in your heart, in your mind. Nah, I give you my snappy salute. tao na inaala nila ang kapwa nila tao let me uh, I was talking the one was the ambassador in uh, Lee uh, of the Australian embassy Tagalan ako, but there's other one to face the third group. Just uh, irritate about one or two or three there in that room. Everybody, when I came, it was just. So I am very sad, but uh, uh, something also about. Uh, the best uh, I can really say is that I remember in one of the debates, I think, came there except me and uh, another candidate. And uh, I, I, I was asked by the moderator, 
why are you here? What's your... Ulo man, he said, I am here because I and I love the Filipino. Truly. Who did not uh, understand the dimension of my And for those uh, that there was already a sort of uh, a something uh, half knowledge of what I am do <clears throat> especially a problem we have a problem in this country deeply serious I would say it's not easy to comprehend how we would go about treating the form confirmed addict. If we're just about a thousand or even hundred, but four million is sheer horror. And that is why when I was mayor, I knew drugs was really a very serious problem of the city. But uh, I was able to control it in such a way that it was just manageable. But few here and there and far in between the years that I was mayor. I was mayor for 22 years. <clears throat> I knew about drugs because I was a prosecutor. And there's uh, so many ways that money can work for a criminal. Buying the case, bribing the police, bribing the fiscals, prosecutors, and bribing judges outright. And there was even a time when I was handling a piece of evidence, which was really, in reality, in the arrest, it was really shabu. But when I was presenting it court, in court, and I knew that he was bought, because... Uh, even the other fiscal say that uh, <laughs> it turned out to be alum was and so and there was uh, a judge there's a judge here in even in Manila far, far more than the judge in my place he had about 1,000 cases not a single conviction of drugs so if this is how the way it is done and we are you are in prison and you operate just like in America, you continue to operate the drug operations outside or inside the prison and you have so many lieutenants going around. It's really an apparatus of death. Death for the victims and death for the perpetrators. Now, in Davao I said, do not destroy my country. Do not deprive us of the next generation. Because if you do that, I will kill you. And so I ordered the police, not only police action, but war. When I became president, I repeated the same statement. Do not destroy my country because I love my countrymen and do not destroy anything here that is really for the next generation. So I said, tell the military, go out and fight. Go out and arrest them if it is still possible to arrest them. But if you feel that in effecting the arrest, you will lose your life, then my God kill the idiot and you just follow my orders and I will protect you all the way. And when the time comes at the end of the day and there's a reckoning of whoever is responsible, I gave the orders. I assume full responsibility. And if I have to go to hell, may I rot in jail for all times. If I'm cut, they say that they want a good data, fine. Good. It's part of my destiny. You know very well, all of you Filipinos, that I did have the money, I did have the machine. 
I don't even know why I'm here. And I asked my wife when the return was uh, within, because my margin was my my margin was about six million. And to think that I did not have a leader except for two ladies. I knew Marcos of Ilocos and uh, uh, somewhere in Mindanao, also a lady, because she was also my lady once upon a time. Uh, <laughs> So that's my order. I said, uh, you know, I asked my wife, what happened? My, my, my wife said, she, she's a Baptist. I said, you know, there must be a message for you from God. We have a serious problem in this country. That is why when I go out, and when we take off leaving Indonesia, Singapore, and the other countries, I'm almost not really crying but misty-eyed. And I said in my country, they don't have my problems. They don't have the serious problem of Shabu. They don't have the serious problem of rebellion in the South. Nationally, the Communist Party of the Philippines and the Maote, who has pledged allegiance to ISIS, and the Abu Sayyaf kidnappers. Maswerte hila sabi, what a luck for you guys. It's peaceful, development is going on at full speed. Nothing is stopping them, and they are all happy. And the citizens are comfortable. What about me? What can I give the country. I'm just a simple lawyer. Um, 75, 75, 76. I'm not a brilliant guy. I'm not uh, like uh, everybody else. I, I never tasted the grade of the number 8. It's only 7. 78, 79, back to 76, 75. And I said uh, there must be a reason for this. And uh, I knew already the meaning of what uh, the statement by white man. I have to solve the serious problem first. And uh, gave the same warning to everybody and said, stop drugs. And I told the police, destroy the apparatus. It's not good when you only hit the delivery boy, you have to go up. Early on, they'd always say, you're in Manila, what about the big fish? So where are they? Why are you arresting? They didn't really bother to know that those big fish were really, some of them, were aliens, foreigners. And for those who are in prison, they continue to use the. And despite of the jammers and everything, they had their way of running still. And uh, we are fighting a losing battle here. And so I want everybody stop drugs, I'll kill you. You want to stay alive, stop drugs. You want bed? You want death? Oh, go on with the drugs. Simple, man. You know, until the last pusher is out of the streets in my country, and until the biggest or big drug lords are killed, this campaign against drugs will continue to the very last day of my term, six years from now. If I do not survive, then it is God's will that I do not survive. If I only stay here for about a year or two, then that is my destiny. And that is the time, the only time that God gave me to be president of the Republic. But I intend to solve, we are now talking to the communists. 
For the first time, they have agreed to talk uh, in Norway, who provided the good offices for them to meet and discuss. Secretary Bellew is uh, also one of the panelists on the government side. I think he conceded the island of Mindanao to them. And I said, Will you if you do that, I'll kill you also. <laughs> the republic will remain to be a republic. And I will protect for the love of my fellow men, just like what you do. I will protect the innocent lives. I will not allow that they go crazy. Shabu, one year, two years of years, you're finished because the human brain shrinks. And they cannot, they say, the forensics guy says, rehab is no longer viable. So dito na ako, because this is burning issue about uh, the rapporteur of the Human Rights Commission wants to come here. And she said, she wants to talk to me one-on-one. Uh, on one. We don't know. We go public, you make the accusations. I'd like to know where you get the garbage. Because give me a policeman or a soldier here in front of me and ask him kung sino tao. Who was the one or who I ordered to be killed? Extrajudicial? We do not do that. You do not shoot. You know, guys, our military officers, most of them from the PME, they would not do that. And if you force them to commit the kind of... They will, they will mount echo data. Believe me. Especially, and, and, the, and all of them, the officers in the non-commission and commissioned officers. We have uh, 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 armed forces who will never, never do that. And I know that, uh, well, you do not overdo things. You think that we should people walking over the hands tied at back on bended knees. But if you say that a third of all killings were committed when... Uh, it happened during a police confrontation. Yes. I know because I've been mayor of Davao City. I know because I walk the streets there alone with a bike. Sometimes I drive a taxi. You can ask anybody from Davao City. I go alone at night when my security are already sent home. And I have experienced it. I saw it several times. Itong mga buang na drugista, the first thing that would enter the mind is, or to know the mind is, uh, the mental health of a person is uh, paranoia. And you would see, I'm sure that you have seen partners, uh, your, your, your uh, friends, and the sons and daughters of your mga kumari, kumpari, uh, and your friends. They would, you would know because he's very suspicious of everything. I do not like the way drugs destroy. It does not only destroy the mind. It destroys the family and society. The first thing that will happen if you have a drug dependent, alam ninyo yan, lumalaban sa nanay, pati tatay, sinasampal sa muka ng cellphone ang nanay and the horrible son or daughter could, and even killing the grandfather or the grandmother because she looked like a devil and somebody was whispering to him. That is the very thing that really rages uh, in my heart. Galit ako kasi lahat na becomes a dysfunctional family. The children can no longer the food intended for food, the meager income, for the tuition, and for the fare, punta sa druga. I'll give you an example. I made a count. Druga is 200 known when I started the campaign. 
tondo 200 at one week ed ilan yon or one month 6000 times the 3 million wag na yung 4 akin yung 4 hindi pa tapos eh only 3 because the yung fourth competition akin i am now hitting the 900 mark by the year's end i would have breached the 1 million mark so another million so we'll just stick to three a computation 6000 a month times 14 a uh, 4 million that's 8 billion and one year times term that's 260 billion in that talagang masisira tayo wala nga tayong we are yesterday i ordered the release of 1 billion because i do not have the rehab centers 1 billion for those needing medications 1 billion for the crazy guys i could have bought something useful rice uh, uh, poverty alleviation school and i have to spend because i'm being attacked kasi sabi na why is do 30 killing the drug addicts and the drug lords and why he does why does that he place them in the in the rehab what well, i tell you our rehab are filled to the bins and when I, i you know very well that i became a mayor mid term i am operating on a budget that was prepared by aquino until the end of the year the campaign sloganeering was bottoms up and the use the money for all of that thing buying useless things just to win the election ang naiwan sa akin is maintenance and operation of my so how i was a lot of flogging and uh, crucifixion that uh, i will not compare right? i cannot get the defense money or the education money to place it uh, under the department of health you see that to be robbing peter to pay paul so i was really just trying to find out how then i remembered when we talk about humanity there was this chinese he was a very simple man he came to me here and he said i'm going to donate the rehab it's fine thank you thank you so uh, i said how many good for how many 300 for 100 sana no? i will uh, i'll go to the land so i ordered the military to open up the military camps because our military army reservations they have a uh, big reservations so i ordered all open up your gates and allow them to build the up there so this guy went to fort maxaysay he built he built 10,000 good for 10,000 facility after that he passed by here just to he shook my hand and say i'm going never saw him again and so for those of uh, you who spend time money for your fellow men i'm sure god uh, will repay you I, i i am very sure yang karma i'm 72 at lahat lahat ng all the things the bad things that i i committed and did in the past pinagbayaran ko yan i know somehow that i was repaying my debts to god for doing something sometimes wrong but you know just just a skilling in our uh, catechism when i was grade 1 grade 2 under the jesuits they would always say that you'll go to hell it's a mortal sin truly i do not enjoy killing me kind but i have to protect the four million it must be stopped otherwise 
I don't know if uh, the, the other guy would, ha would have won the presidency. I do not know kung kaya talaga. But uh, somehow I must stop it. Because it will continue to contaminate and contaminate. And so, to the last man, I said to the law enforcement, the military guys, destroy the apparatus. And they said, oh, sir, if they are there, destroy them also. Especially if they put up a good fight. O, pang walang baril, walang, bigyan mo ng baril. There's a loaded gun. Fight, because uh, the mayor said, uh, let's fight. To the last ang apparatus, when I say destroy the operation, destroy everybody there, including the laboratory. And so how many laboratories in the Philippines have been discovered? You know, the one in Pampanga riot was uh, the, 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 the machines there, the equipments, would fill two warehouses. Or if you want a visual, you can place there uh, about four airplanes, if it's a hangar. So, mabutit na lang, hindi ko talaga naabutan sila. Because pag inabot kita dyan, nag-operate ka. Say your prayers and I will kill you. That's why I said, a fourth of what happened may be correct. Truly, it must have been a shootout. You know, why, why do you say that they, they say rub out? Because the police do not go out alone. They go out in numbers, two or three in operation. That is why the idiot would always die or die fighting. And why do you say now, bakit noon? Why in the past? Walang siyabo, walang Because the answer is very simple. We have been or we are already or we have been in a narco-politic country Hindi natin alam until I became the President of this Republic. When I started to squeeze it, when I started to squeeze everybody, then I found out that there are mayors, municipal mayors, barangay captains, governors, and a few congressmen were in the business of Shabu. We have been corrupted, and this is why I cry every night. This is the drug industry of the Philippines. In here are the names of municipal mayors, almost all of the barangay captains, and a few, a senator who was playing at the same time, and she was glorified with an award in Washington, D.C. God. Then I should know very well. You have to investigate. Look at it. Every page. Elected public official. Ako itong maniwala. Ako ano? Representative Vicente Belmonte. Mayor Lawrence Cruz. That's an illegal. Mayor Willie Lim. The Rohe Profile. Lahat yan. This is my problem. And maybe it will take my life or my entire term to solve it. Pictures. General Loot, who reported in his uh, assets, uh, statement of assets and liabilities, he had 100 billion because he was a good businessman. That is my problem. That is why we have to take care of our generation. This is the drug industry. That is why I gave a copy to the Speaker and to the Senate and I said, Di ko kaya. I cannot handle it on my own. And even if it's true that I can kill them with a bullet, I will run out of bullets and time to do it. 
That is the agony that we have. Many people do not realize it. So this mayor was uh, rubbed out, and the police said he fought, and the investigator said that he had a gun. He had, the police said that he fought the top of the gun, and the bleeding heart would say, oh, he had no gun. Given his corruption, and he bought all of the politicians, Odikta, the couple, husband and wife, were operating on the western side of Visayas. Well, where the mayor, Spinoza, operated there was the eastern side. How many lives were lost? How many crazy Filipinos are there? Four million. Concede to them about two, one million. And when they died, everybody said, ah, oh, he was Rabbi Baden. And is the mayor defending the police? And I pose this question. You want me to side over the death of a son of a bitch? Although I worry about the four million now suffering in agony, and I said the social cost of a destroyed family. You only not destroy the person. Look at Mexico. They elect a mayor there, lady, in the afternoon she's assassinated. It will happen here because of the barangay captains. That is why I did not agree to an election. Because if there's an election, they will win. And if my plane go back home crashes, I do not really know how, how, how the next. Baka yun yung taksi, ay, baka madisgrasya ko. Never mind, there's a vice president. Oh well, let's try, let try doing it. Wala eh, but kaya sabi ko, it must be God, because uh, you, you, you must be very, obviously, you know the, the characters of, uh, I promise you no corruption, and there will be no corruption. I filed two commissioners of, cost, uh, of immigration. You know what? They were all my fraternity brothers. I filed all of the ERC. How can I be sure that you are protecting public interest when you are a board member that would hear cases of increase or decrease of electricity when you are corrupt? So everything, the first wave of corruption, you're out. You are out. And do not make a standard because you might not be there standing but lying down. That's the only way, especially in a, Now, the reason why we are said in narco politics, they are not these politicians. Otherwise, they have an army escort of two, then a police. So, nobody would touch them. Every time they go to places, uh, people would know that there is an idiot there pretending to be a big one when he's not. He wants his presence felt by the crowd. He rides on a plane with arms. Well, not my term. Next year, I will impose the two limit. Two, uh, two security officers. And... Uh, the, the rest will go back. That's what I said. That's why you saw people running. You cannot imagine a, a mayor who moves like a swagger, like a tough guy. And when I gave the warning, you surrender or I'll kill you within 24 hours. They went to, to Krami, perspiring and sweating all over. And I said, all the security men, go back to your units. So when there is no security, they are afraid. And so you can hardly hear now a mayor. I, I don't like it. I don't like people. I've been mayor of Davao City. I do not even appear on national TV. Nakukurnihan ako. I find it kornihan. Kakatindig balahibo. That is why here it's simple. If I invite you here, it's... I'm not pretending. We have money. But the problem is the money, is the, 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 the food that we're eating is... 
sponsored by the people. So you are here, you are invited. I do not prepare steak and all. Just soup, rice, then one bayan. That is what you get here. Sometimes we, because we want to honor the Filipinos, prepare a better one, but maybe one or two or three selections. But usually, in, uh, about just uh, uh, like uh, civic organizations, they want to come here. Okay, we eat, but very limited menu. I know that uh, it's uh, sometimes hypocrisy, but it is the hypocrisy also funded by the people. So, <laughs> simply lang tayo. I said, my administration, and I said it, you do not blame me. I know that maybe some of you did not vote for me. But during the debates, do not, you know, I was asked by the moderator, I don't, I don't remember. It was the debates in Cebu. And we were asked, uh, because of the questions, uh, several, but this one. Are you willing to bury Marcos? Salibinang ng bayani. The three of them said no. I and B9 said yes. Because we have to heal this nation. If you do not want to heal this nation, you go demonstrating fine, I said. No offense intended, but the yellow who are interested to ask me. If you can master the money and for fine. Said I'll go. If I get impeached, the better. But let it be remembered that you impeached him not because I was, I was I'm corrupt, but because I was desperate to help my countrymen. That's what I Thank you. Is it my is dinner is served? Why in Mozilla? Thank you, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. May I call on all the awardees to come forward for the photo opportunity with the President.